Welcome back everyone. In this video I will talk about AL Jitter Color. One of my viewers asked me to do a short introduction about the Jitter Color node. It is essentially a node which helps you vary colors or any float values inside of your shading network. Let's assign an AL surface shader to my current selection. And head over to the node editor. For this to work, you need unique objects inside of your, of your scene. And to double check if your, if your setup is correct, you can start the IPR session and change the debug mode to object. And if you see some random objects in here, then you know it will work. So first, let's create an AI utility node, which is a shader from, from Arnold. Delete the shading group and create the AL jitter color node. The input of the jitter color is a signal and the signal will be the object ID from the objects. So in the AI utility shader, let's rename this for object, object ID and the out color for this is the input signal. Change the object ID mode from color to object and the shading mode to flat. To see what it is doing, let's connect it to the diffuse color and start an IPR session. You can actually see that we also get the random signal color. So let's connect the out color of the jitter color to the diffuse color and rename the jitter to apple diffuse. In the parameters of the shader, you've got an input color. You would most probably pl plug in an apple texture or something similar to this into the input. But for now, let's just stick with a red color, which should mimic an apple texture. In here, you've got minimum and maximum values for saturation, gain, and offset. So now let's have a look how this looks like. So it still does not work, but we connected everything properly. The problem is the signal values. The problem is object ID outputs float values in the range of 0 and 1, but the AL input color uses in values, which are non-float values. So for this to work properly, we need to multiply the output value of the object ID by a bigger number so we get proper ints. To do that, create a multiply divide node. The input is the output of the object ID and the output R or output X for the multiple divide node will be our signal again. Currently no changes of the image because we still need to multiply the value. So let's just add a thousand because the output of the multiple divide now is now multiplied by a thousand which results in proper int values for the signal to work. Going back to the jitter color, let's adjust some parameters in here. The hue is just a hue shift. We still want that, but for now let's let's put everything to default so we get a proper result back. So this is now the current input color. So let's randomize the saturation. So so now you can see that something is happening here. We've got more vibrant colors and more desaturated ones. Also, let's do a gain randomization. Let's, in, let's change this a bit more. Yeah, something like this. So now we get some darker apples, some brighter apples. And also, let's adjust the hue shift. Some orange apples, not sure if they really exist, but yeah, you get them. You, you can use also the object ID uh, to randomize bump values, roughness values. So let's first create another AL jitter color and call this spec R rand for randomization. Input is the same input, output X for the signal. And this guy connects to the specular one roughness. Let's head over to debug mode to isolate selected and see what values we actually get. You can see that we get a value f ranging from 1 to, what is it, to 0 0.5, which is way too high for a roughness value. Let's adjust the input slider. So now the min value is 0 0.06, which is quite glossy. So let's just adjust this a bit. Let's see how this looks. 
some really glossy apples now. Let's adjust the input a bit more. So now this one is quite glossy, this one is quite rough, and you get a nice variation for this. Possibly the, the overall strength is too much, but I just want to change the IOR a bit. Also, let's introduce a bump map. Let's first create jitter colors and duplicate this one more time. The one will be the distortion for the noise map, call this distortion rand, and the other one is a bump depth rand. Also, let's create the AI noise, which plugs into the bump slot. Change your isolate selected to see what the bump map is doing. Update your scene again. So this is now the current bump map. Let's adjust the scale to something like 5. Which might be a bit too small. So let's try 3. This should work. So I want to adjust this value randomly so we get some stronger and some not so strong distortion on the apples just to get a more variation. So as well, connecting the output of the multiply divide node into the signal and the out color R uh, to the, let's show all attributes, uh, to the distortion. So we're getting now values in a range from 1 to 0 0.7, which is as well too high. So let's adjust the slider again. So this is mostly a trial and error. So you always see what you're getting and then adjusting accordingly. So this is the current bump strength. So let's adjust this also randomly, connecting the, the output X to the signal and the out color R into my bump depth. Uh, bump map depth, so here we are. Show all. And connect this to the depth value. So bump maps are really sensitive, so you need really low values for this to work properly. So now you can see that we get some bump variation across all the apples, which gives you a, a unique rendered result of just a procedural shader. It is nothing, nothing special, but Imagine the power you have with the AL Jitter color to really vary all your shader networks or anything else. You can also control lights with this, like different exposure values or whatever. There's so much possibilities with this. I hope this quick video showed you how to make proper use of the AL Jitter color. It also works with hairs, but then you need to be aware that you would use a curve ID as a signal instead of the object ID because curve ha curves have curve IDs for their hair strands. But essentially, it is the same thing. Thank you guys for watching, and give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video.